In this problem, we're told the machine part has a shape of a solid uniform sphere, mass 225 grams, and diameter 3 centimeters. It is spinning about a frictionless axle through its center, but at one point on its equator, it is scraping against metal, resulting in a friction force of 0 0.02 uh, newtons at that point. Find its angular acceleration, and how long will it take to decrease its rotational speed by 22.5 uh, radians per second. So let's go ahead and draw what's going on here first. So we have this uh, uniform sphere, and I'm, this is going to be my best drawing, but here's our sphere, right? So this is going to be our sphere, right? So there's our sphere. It's going to have a mass equal to 225 grams, right? And we know it's going to be rotating about its center. So imagine this is its center, right? And it's going to be rotating about it. So it's just going to be rotating like this. Um, yeah, so, and we know at one point it's going to be scraping against metal. Right, so let's just say this point is right here. So imagine there's some piece of metal here or something, I don't know, and it's gonna create a frictional force, right, equal to 0 0.0200 to 0, 0 newtons. All right, so it's gonna be scraping against it as it spins, okay? So now we know this, right? So we know the mass, we also are told the diameter, which is gonna be three centimeters. So let me actually just label it. So imagine this right here is the diameter, and we know it's gonna be three centimeters. Okay, so we're given a bunch of things and we're trying to solve for A, right? So the first part for A, we're trying to find its angular acceleration. So how do we want to do this? So keep in mind what they give us. They give us M, they give us the diameter, and they give us a force. So when they give me a force, mass, and um, a diameter, generally when they give you mass and diameter, they're talking about inertia because you can solve for inertia using radius and mass, right? And we know the radius since they're given the diameter. Right, and we're given a force, which means we can calculate the torque. And if we want to solve for angular acceleration, we know torque equals I alpha. Right? If we want to find the angular acceleration, right, we can just divide both sides by I, meaning that the angular acceleration is just the torque divided by the inertia. Right? So if we can find both of these, uh, we're going to be able to solve. So let's just go ahead and start with um, inertia first. So, how do we calculate inertia? So, inertia is different depending on the type of object and how it's rotating. In this case, we have a sphere. And so this sphere is just going to be rotating about its axle, and it's a solid sphere. So the formula we use is 2 over 5 mr squared. And if you look in your textbook, they're going to give you the formulas uh, depending on the type of scenario. So just look there, and you'll see that we use this one for this type. So we know all these data points, right? We know the mass, which is 225 grams, and we know the radius, which is just half of the diameter. But when we do this, uh, we want to make sure they're in the correct units. The mass has to be in kilograms, and this has to be in meters. Um, so we got to do that first. So let's do that. So uh, 225 grams, if we want it in kilograms, right, 225 grams, uh, we know that there's 1,000 grams for every 1 kg, right? And so if we just divide it by 1,000, that's going to make it in kilograms. So 225 divided by 1,000 is 0.225. So uh, it's just going to be 2 over 5 multiplied by the mass, which we're converting into kilograms, which we know is 0.225 kg. So now we need the radius. So radius is half the diameter. So half of 3 is just 1.5 centimeters. Right, but we need it in meters. So we know that there's 100 centimeters for every one meter. Right, so you just want to divide by 100. So you just want to do uh, 1.5 divided by 100, and you're going to get 0 0.015 meters. Right, so 0 0.015 now. Let's plug that in. So times the radius, which we just found was 0 0.015 meters, and we're squaring it. So just plug this in your calculator. Do 2 over 5, multiply that by 0.225, and then multiply that by 0 0.015 squared. So when you do this, right, so when you plug this in, you're going to get that it equals point, yeah, so you're going to get 2.025 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, kilogram, and then keep in mind the units, kilogram meters squared. So kilogram meter squared, this is going to be the units, right? So if you plug this in, you'll get that. So now we have the inertia, and we need the torque. So what is the formula for torque? Well, torque is equal to radius times, um, or radius times force times the sine of the angle between where the radius is and where the force is being applied. Luckily, it's being applied um, at the equator. And basically what they want us to know is that it's being applied perpendicular, meaning that the angle, right, when an angle is perpendicular, it just means it's 90 degrees. And the sine of 90 is just 1. So we just have to take the radius and multiply by the force. So the radius in this case, we just calculated 0 0.015, right? What's the force, though? So the force is equal to 
0.0200 newtons, right? So that's the force. And so, right, this was the frictional force. So we just got to multiply by that. But keep in mind, when you do this, you want to say uh, frictional force, we want to assign it a sign, meaning uh, since it's going in the opposite direction, right, because it's rotating one way and the frictional force is being applied the other way because it's slowing it down, meaning we want to make it negative. So it's just negative 0.0200 newtons. So go ahead and do this. So if you do 0 0.015, multiply that by 0 0.02, you're going to get that it equals minus 3 times 10 to the minus 4 uh, newton meters, right? Because this is a newtons, this is a meter, so newton meters. So that's the torque. Uh, and now what you should notice is we have torque, we have inertia, and we can solve for alpha, the uh, angular acceleration. So let's just go ahead and do that. So alpha is going to be equal to the torque, which is minus 3 times 10 to the minus 4 newton meters all over the inertia, which is uh, 2.025 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, kilogram meter squared. Yeah, so uh, now you've got it like this, right? And if you plug this in your calculator, you're going to get the alpha or the angular acceleration is equal to about uh, minus 14.8. Uh, and then the units are going to be radians per second squared. That's what we measured in. Uh, so minus 14.8 radians per second squared. That's going to be uh, the angular acceleration or your answer to A. So now we've got A, right? Let's move on to B. So B is actually going to be pretty simple. Uh, we're trying to find how long will it take to decrease its rotational speed by 22.5 radians per second. So how do we do this? So uh, we're given, right? So notice what we're trying to find. Uh, trying to find time, right? We're solving for time. They say how long. And we're given um, oh, omega, right? We're given omega. Uh, and so the way we're going to solve this is by relating these variables. So we know that alpha is equal to the change in omega over the change in time, okay? And we're trying to solve for the change in time, right? But we're given omega, and we have alpha from the last problem, right? So what we can do is just multiply both sides by uh, delta t, and then divide by this, right? And then you're just going to get delta t is equal to the change in omega over the uh, over uh, angular acceleration. And so now we've got it like this, right? So keep in mind, we know these variables. We know the change in omega. They're telling us how long will it take to decrease its rotational speed by this um, by this speed, right? Which is 22.5 radians per second. So the change is going to be, since we're decreasing, right? We're losing 22.5. So you just say minus 22.5 radians per second. Right, and then we just plug in the rate at which it's going to be decreasing, right? Which we just calculated minus fourteen point eight radians, or sorry, this isn't radians per second squared. This is just radians per second, uh, right? Because we just measure it uh, in radians per second. So uh, minus fourteen point eight radians per second squared here, and when you do this, right? So do minus twenty two point five divided by fourteen point eight. You're going to get that this equals uh, one point five two. And then it's going to be seconds, right? Because that's what we measure time in. So 1.52 seconds. Yeah, so let me just rewrite it over here. 1.52 seconds. But yeah, so this is going to be the how long it's going to take to uh, decrease 22.5 uh, radians per second um, at this angular acceleration or deceleration. But yeah, so 1.52 seconds, that's going to be uh, your answer to B. But yeah, so this is your answer to B. Uh, this was your answer to A, and yet yeah, hopefully you found this useful.